Howdy. I'm Clint Walker, and you're watching GB TV News. Thanks, Clint, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's world news headlines, Obama to seek expansive war powers, measure for anti-ISIS campaign. And U.S. Mall's new delay of Afghan drawdown. And family confirms death of U.S. aid worker Kayla Mueller in Syria. And Obama urges Putin to accept Ukraine peace deal as violence peaks. And U.S. closes Yemen embassy and removes staff amid political upheaval. And suspect charged for fatal shooting of three Muslim students in North Carolina. And grand jury indicts NYPD officer for killing Akai Gurley. And NBC News suspends Brian Williams for six months over false Iraq claim. And John Stewart to step down on The Daily Show as its host. GVTV News is broadcast on Grass Valley Television, Division of Rural Counties Television Network, whose focus is on community involvement. We also air on NCTV. But before these stories, GVTV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who support your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. In today's world news story, our first one, White House has confirmed it will ask Congress for an expansive war powers resolution to fight the Islamic State Islamic Muslim terrorists across the globe. Plan calls for a three-year military campaign and a potential battle zone without geographic limitations. Measure could also open a door to deploy ground forces by only ruling out their enduring use. President Obama has wagered the current waged the current anti-ISIS strikes in Syria and Iraq under the 2001 War on Terror Resolution as well as the 2002 vote to authorize the Iraq War. New measure would repeal the 2002 authorizing and it keeps authorization of 2001 and that's where we're at at this point. See what happens. White House calls for an expanded war on ISIS comes as ways slowing its withdrawal from Afghanistan for a second time According to the Washington Post, the U.S. commander in Afghanistan would be given leeway to set the pace of the planned drawdown of NATO forces this year. The U.S.-led NATO occupation formally ended its combat, combat mission in December, but the U.S. secretary expanded its role to ensure American troops continue fighting. The United States also left behind an additional 1,000 troops on top of the nearly 10,000 already committed to remain. Family of kidnapped U.S. aid worker Kayla Mueller has confirmed her death in Syria. Mueller's captors, the Islamic State Islamic Muslim terrorists, have claimed Mueller was killed in Jordanian airstrike last week. On Tuesday, the family said it had received proof she was killed, but it remains unclear how Kayla Mueller's aunt, Lori Lyon, paid tribute to her niece. And she said she has done more in her incredible 26 years than many people can have imagined doing in their lifetime. My daughter said to me, things that were important to Kayla were finally getting the attention that they deserve. Kayla has touched the heart of the world. Miller moved to the Turkish-Syrian border in 2012 to work as a Syrian ref with Syrian refugees. She had previously worked with refugees overseas, including Tibetans in India, Africans in Israel, Palestinians in occupied territory, and Tuesday, President Obama said he is heartbroken by Miller's death, but defended U.S. policy blocking negotiations and ransom payments to militant groups like ISIS, the Islamic Muslim terrorists. President Obama has urged Vladimir Putin to accept a peace deal with Ukraine while warning the rising cost of if the Russian leader does not. Obama and Putin spoke on the phone about the Russia and Ukraine and Germany and France and Belarus. The White House says Obama stressed the importance of seizing the opportunity of the negotiations and also warning the cost will, will rise if Russia continues to 
back in Ukrainian rebels. Obama set called to Putin one day after he said he considered arming the Ukrainian government. A number of European countries, including France and Germany, have opposed military aid to Kyiv. Talks come as eastern Ukraine has seen some of the worst violence to date. At least 12 people were killed and 64 wounded in the city of Kramatorsk when a rocket struck a headquarters of Ukrainian's military campaign. On the eve of the, today's talks, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko called for the removal of Russian soldiers from the Ukraine and said this is absolutely unacceptable and that's why we think that these crimes should be punished. We demand immediate unconditional ceasefire, withdrawal of troops, closing the border and withdrawal of all the foreign troops from Ukrainian territory. Poroshenko said he is prepared to impose martial law throughout Ukraine. Casualties were also reported from Chilling and rebel-held city of Donetsk. Ukraine says it wants to return to the terms of the September ceasefire, while Russia says any new truce must reflect the gains of separatist rebels over Ukrainian f- forces since fighting resumed. Russia has also called for assurance against NATO's expansion and addressing the grievances of eastern Ukrainians opposed to the Kyiv government that came to power with the ousting of elected President Yanukovych one year ago. State Department has closed the U.S. Embassy in Yemen, evacuated staff, including ambassador, amid political and security issues in the capital of Sana'a. Yemen has been in limbo since Hotha rebels forced the resignation of the Yemeni cabinet and then seized power last week. Speaking to reporters in Washington, State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki declined to share details on the closure. Be what a surprise. And she said, the safety and security of U.S. personnel in Yemen is our top priority, and we're always evaluating security situations in ground and taking steps to mitigate risk. We have been reducing staff in Yemen for a few weeks, as you know, and given a volatile political and security situation, we have nothing further to announce over and above that we have previously announced. Hothais have dissolved parliament and named Muhammad Ali al Hothai as the new president in place of the ousted Abu Rabu Mansur Hadi. The Houthis moved move comes as they take part in a new round in UN brokered talks. Three Muslim students have been shot dead in an apparent hate crime at University of North Carolina. The victims were killed Tuesday night when a gunman opened fire in a residential complex in Chapel Hill. They were identified as 23-year-old Day Barakat, his 21-year-old wife Yusor Muhammad, and her sister, 19-year-old Razan Muhammad Abu Salah, a suspect. Craig Stephen Hicks had been arrested and charged with three counts of first-degree murder. Hicks had made online posts declaring himself a supporter of a group of atheists for equality. Hashtag Chapel Hill shootings was spread through social media and internet users criticizing what they called lack of national media coverage of the shooting. Although they say that it was a, about a parking uh, situation in the parking lot. Grand jury has indicted a New York City police officer for the killing of, uh, of the uh, Akai Gurley. Gurley was in dimly lit stairwell in Brooklyn Housing Project when Officer Peter Lying opened fire. Lying did not respond to police radio and contact for six more minutes afterwards. Texas Union representative for advice. Police Commissioner Bill Bratton said Lying fired by accident. Lying fi- faces charges of manslaughter, criminal negligence, homicide, assault, and official misconduct. And NBC's top news anchor had suspended. An- they suspended Brian Williams for six months without pay for false statements that he made in the tw- about a 2003 incident in Iraq. American soldiers publicly challenged Williams' account, saying he was nowhere near the aircraft that came under attack. Williams was blamed for fog of memory for his mistake, but in a statement, NBC said Williams' claims were wrong and completely inappropriate for someone in Brian's position. On Tuesday, Williams' former boss, the NBC Universal Bob Wright, defended the anchor by pointing to his favorable, favorable coverage of the military, saying he has been the strongest supporter of military in any news of any news players. He never comes back with negative stories. He wouldn't question if we're spending too much. As Brian Williams is suspended, nation's top satirist of the media and political establishment has announced he is stepping down sometime this year. On Tuesday, John Stewart said he will retire as a host of The Daily Show after a 16-year run. And that's it for the World News Today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News.
That's right, it's time for the police blotter. Pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. These public records are obtained from daily logs issued from Nevada County law enforcement. Grass Valley Police Department on Monday, 8 a.m., a man from Comstock Court reported a person borrowed his vehicle without permission and damaged the carport when he returned it. 9.38 a.m., a woman from Race Street requested extra patrols due to transients trespassing. 9.53 a.m., a caller from 1000 block of Sutton Way reported a man in a yellow raincoat stole a bottle of alcohol. He was arrested on suspicion of burglary, trespassing, and violating probation. In 10.19 a.m., a caller from 100 block of East Main Street reported vandalism to a business door. In 1.51 p.m., a caller from Plaza Drive reported a person in a truck selling drugs. It was unfounded. At 2.31 p.m., a caller from Mill Street reported people checking doors on vehicles they could not be located. At 3.18 p.m., a woman from 500 block of Escaton Circle reported giving a scam caller $3,000. 5.20 p.m., a victim in emergency room reported being hit with a plate. At 5.43 p.m., a caller from 100 block of Dorsey Drive reported a man tried to force an 11-year-old boy and his friend in his vehicle. It was not a kidnap attempt. It was misunderstanding. He was trying to stop them from trespassing. 9.21 p.m., a caller from Highland Port Court reported a man peering into a window of a house. 11.23 p.m., a woman from 100 block of North Church Street reported her car was on fire. And Tuesday, 2.05 a.m., a caller from 400 block of Bennett Street reported very loud music. Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Monday, 9.23 a.m. A caller from 12,000 block of Auburn Road reported vandalism to a building. At 9.29 a.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Black Hawk Court reported identity theft. In 10.33 a.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Crescent Drive reported a residential burglary. 10.40 a.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Raccoon Mountain Road reported money had been lost in a timeshare scam. 11.11 a.m., a caller from 15,000 block of Lorry Drive reported a scam with money lost. 11.23 a.m., a caller from 23,000 block of Hydraulic Way reported a theft. 11.39 a.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Howe Avenue reported a boat tire was slashed and other property was vandalized. At 12.03 p.m., a caller from 12,000 block of Little Deer Creek Lane reported a fraud. At 3.18 p.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Wolf Creek Road reported an online fraud to a bank account. 4.21 p.m., a caller from 22,000 block of Highway 49 reported a fraudulent internet sale. And 6.03 p.m., a caller from Auburn Road in Robin Hood Lane reported a young woman walking down the road while carrying an axe. She could not be located. 8.13 p.m., a caller from 16,000 block of Rough and Ready Highway reported a possible Craigslist or eBay scam. At 11.45 p.m., a caller from Mystic Mine and Piriette Roads reported a young girl screaming for an hour. It might have been an animal. And that's it for the blot of the day. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us. GV TV News.
In today's local news headlines, new Nevada County Mental Health Crisis Unit gets green light. And driver arrested after allegedly fleeing from scene of crash in Grass Valley. And three arrested in Grass Valley after allegedly attempting to break in. In our first story, four bed units separated from the hospital emergency room will be built for people in mental health crisis. Nevada County Supervisors decided Tuesday. Supervisors voted unanimously to partner with Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital to operate the small mental health facility known as a crisis stabilization unit on the grounds of Dignity Health Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital in Grass Valley. The facility is staffed by registered nurse, psychiatric technician, and licensed vocational nurse, and a full-time mental health professional will be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to temporarily house people in mental health crisis who need counseling and support or who are in on involuntary hold, also known as a 5150 hold, for evaluation of possible commitment to an inpatient psychiatric facility. Not only is it best for the mental health patients, it is better for the hospital staff who are not prepared to work with mental health patients and who are sometimes frightened, said Nancy Ramsey, chairman, chairwoman of the Nevada County Mental Health Board. It's also better for the mentally ill and injured patients who need a bed as well as safe place without undue noise and police presence. Minds in Recovery, an offshoot of nonprofit, uh, a nonprofit that sprang out of local chapter of National Alliance of the Mentally Ill, Na- Mentally Ill, NAMI, was prime mover in getting this project planted at the hospital. Myself, president of Minds in Recovery, and former secretary of local National Alliance for the Mentally Ill Board, I said we had meetings with the hospital several years ago when they were planning to expand on the hospital grounds and work working in the community to plant the seed of this type of project. In the last five years, we've seen 60% increase of people coming into emergency rooms and for mental health evaluations, said Bri- Dr. Brian Evans, chief medical officer up at the hospital. Rebecca Slade, interim director of the county's behavioral health department, said the new facility will not only open up space in the hospital emergency room, but will separate people who are in mental health crisis from the ER with medical emergencies such as broken arms. Although most big cities in this state have a crisis unit in their hospitals. Nevada County will be one of the few smaller counties statewide to have its own crisis unit, officials added. I've wanted to have a CSU for 10 years or more, said Brian Evans, chief medical officer of Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital, when he told the county supervisors, in the last five years, we've seen 60% increase in people coming into the emergency room with mental health evaluations. Evans said the hospital emergency room was tiny and overcrowded, and if a patient comes in with a significant psychiatric problem, probably is not a healing environment for the patient themselves. Before entering the CSU, a patient would undergo a brief medical clearance in the emergency room. The unit will be designed to offer up to 23 hours care per patient. Three of the four beds will be reserved for patients who are medically cleared and referred from the hospital's emergency room. The fourth bed would be available for patients who come in from other hospitals or in other scenarios. Money to build and lease this Space for the new facility, which will be a 4,900 square foot modular unit installed about 70 feet away from the hospital's ER, will come from a $500,000 grant authorized through the state Senate Bill 82, Investments in the Mental Health Wellness Act of 2013, according to Michael Hegarty, Interim Director of the Nevada County Health and Human Service Agency. County supervisors on Tuesday approved the ground lease at the hospital campus, effective immediately. In addition, the state also is granting the country county nearly 2.5 million over the three years for staffing the exact terms of staffing which Hegarty said are not tied to the CSU are spelled out in a detailed joint operational agreement between the county and the hospital that are also approved by supervisors on Tuesday this will be have no impact on the county's general fund Hegarty told the board supervisor Hank Weston said he is concerned about the sustainability of the project what happens after three years when the grant runs out he asked And Hegarty said the worst case would be we revert back to what exists currently, but he said that he hoped to avoid that scenario. I think we need a strong crisis presence, he said. If we have it, we can make adjustments in our budget in three years. A request for proposals for the vendor to operate the CSU will be sent out shortly. Hegarty also added, I must say this is great news that our hard work and planting the seed in the community and the other idea I started with mental health court like drug court, are both now going to be implemented in Nevada County. 
The driver of Mini Cooper reportedly crashed into a power pole and then fled the scene, leaving behind an injured teenage girl Saturday night. Grass Valley police officers responded to a scene of an incident, an accident, in the 100 block of East Empire Street at about 7.45 p.m., according to dispatch reports. The car was off-road and had nearly sheared off a pole, said Sergeant Clint Pace. The car was totaled, but the driver had fled on foot. His passenger, a 17-year-old girl, had minor injuries and was taken to Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital. The suspect identified as Jonathan Dillon Steffs subsequently turned himself in, but because of the time elapsed, he could not be charged with being under the influence. Officers did locate nitrous oxide cartridges in Steffs' vehicle. Steff, 23, was booked into county jail on suspicion of hit and run, causing an injury and was being held in lieu of a $25,000 bail. He also will be charged with felony child endangerment, driving on a suspended license and possession of an inhalant. In another story, three people were arrested by Grass Valley police officers after several callers reported an attempted break-in at a travel agency Saturday morning. Police responded to the calls of several people acting suspiciously in the 1600 block of East Main Street at about 7.45 a.m., according to dispatch reports. They found an open window at the business with the chair propped underneath, but no one inside, said Sergeant Clint Bates. The window opened in the area that did not access the main part of the building. Officers located the three suspects nearby two of whom reportedly were behaving suspiciously. An area check reportedly uncovered syringes, a small amount of methamphetamines, and a digital scale. Jason Rose, 23, and Caitlin Sully, 31, were charged with trespassing, possession of controlled substance and drug paraphernalia, and destruction of evidence and were released on a $6,000 bail. Daniel Gregory Bonilla, 32, was booked in suspicion of trespassing and released on a $1,500 bail. And that's all we have for you today. Have a nice weekend. Grass Valley Television brings you local and world news, and we broadcast our 30-minute show six times a day on NCTV, Public Access, Comcast Cable, Channel 11 and 18. Also, we're on Sudden Link, Channel 16 and 18. We have three amazing series, Music, a 30-minute weekly show that airs four times a week, and Pride, Integrity, Guts, and Service, hosted by Sheriff Keith Rawl and me on a bi-monthly series, plays four times a week. We're your community media, and if you have a business and would like to underwrite our shows, we offer almost 230 second spots a month on Comcast and Sudden Link. We also stream live on NevadaCountyTV.org and video on demand there, and our own websites, GVTV.org and GrassValleyTelevision.com. We also post to several Facebook pages and YouTube, Vimeo, Blip.TV, and many other sites on the web where we mirror our uh, shows. We provide 30 second spots and a 60 second spot for you to embed on your web page or whatever you want to do with it. For more information, you can call us 362 8889 or email grassvalleytelevision at gmail.com. We will be happy to explain how your support of us will help us support you.